Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We have three very important things to discuss about not only AMC stock, and we'll talk about AMC, we'll go over the data behind that individual trade, but also what's going on with the Fed, what JP Morgan's Jamie Dimon had to say about the economy and what this news about Russian diplomacy really is so let's get straight into it guys and we're gonna start with the russia situation as you guys do know different factors that are negative or positive weigh on the markets at any given time and what has been happening over the past nine months now there's definitely been uh this negative drawback of the war in ukraine after all in biden's words we're closer to nuclear armageddon or or as close as nuclear armageddon as we have been since the cuban missile crisis 60 years ago so that's being factored in to the stock market that's a very negative thing as you guys know some of the other negatives would be the fed would be growth slowing down inflation potentially stagflation or the wage price spiral all of these things not a positive thing for 2022 and that's what you can mark 2022 as just a shit show year very very little good news well the war in ukraine some top generals are talking about potentially diplomacy being an option here and that would be the best case scenario and that would really help out the markets because that would drop the price of oil right for, because Russia major producer of, of oil and it potentially would free up a lot of oil moving around right you're hopefully at that point not going to get a energy crisis in Europe over the winter and potentially see some people freezing over the winter right so that would have a positive impact on inflation you would take out the risk of nuclear war or nuclear Armageddon as Biden said here at least by a, a, a couple percentage points I would imagine right both those things very very positive now it's unclear if these reports that we are getting as of today are accurate or not we'll have to see over the next 12 hours or so if they get rebuttaled or if that's something that is on the table but that is what caused this major bounce that you are seeing right here and really the volume coincides exactly with that news as well once you hit the low for the day at 357.67 you started to rally pretty aggressively all the way up to about 362.37 so that was a five dollar move on the s p 500 since the low that is well over a one percent move and it's because of this russia diplomacy situation like i said we'll see if that does come to fruition but mixing that in potentially with a lot of the other potential bullish catalysts by the end of this year i think that would be a big thing for markets and would get people a little bit more excited about equities in general so there is that that's the first thing the second thing is what j Jamie Dimon, JP Morgan's Jamie Dimon had to say about the US economy, and he says it's likely to tip into a recession in six to nine months. Now, as you guys know, we are in a technical recession. You have seen two consecutive quarters of declining GDP growth, but every quarter has three revisions. So we're not quite there where the Bureau is going to call it a recession. Probably not gonna happen at least by the end of this year probably in 2023 but whenever jamie diamond says something people like to pay attention because after all you're you know i believe the biggest bank in the world at this point Citibank is very very close as well uh, as as far as market cap but jp morgan one of the top dogs if they're talking about a recession why are they saying that what are they seeing in consumer activities uh that is that is leading to that and you also get earnings on Friday. So if they're coming out and saying this now, maybe they're trying to cushion some potentially bad news or bad numbers coming on earnings. We'll have to wait and see on that. But exactly what he said, uh, he says, JP Morgan's uh, Chase CEO, Jamie Dimon, said the U.S. economy was actually still doing well at present and consumers were likely to be in better shape compared to the 2008 global financial crisis when the world tips into a recession. Quote, 
But you can't talk about the economy without talking about stuff in the future, and this is serious stuff, Diamond said. CNBC's Juliana Tattlebum of or on Monday. His comments come at a time of growing concern about the prospect of an economic recession as the Federal Reserve and other major central banks raise interest rates to combat soaring inflation. So not some very positive news out of Jamie Dimon. That's definitely having a role to play in this 1% down day for the NASDAQ as of right now. And the third and final thing that is really catching people's attention, the uh, headlines, and this might be a little bit more important than what Jamie Dimon actually had to say. It's Fed Evans. He says fighting inflation is the top priority, even if that means job losses. Evans said he sees some signs that inflation is letting up as supply chain pressures ease. He advocated a policy stance where the Fed gets rates to a restrictive level, at which point it can monitor the impact. Quote, price stability sets the stage for law for stronger growth in the future, which is obviously true, but this somewhat still implies the Fed has a lot more tightening to go. And what the markets are really hoping for right now is a soft pivot over the next couple of months. The Fed to come out, raise rates less than 75 basis points, even a 50 basis point rate hike right now would be seen as a very positive thing because the last three rate hikes have been 75 basis points. We've never seen this in the history of the Federal Reserve. And essentially, a lot of people are telling the Fed that they really need to slow down before they cause damage that they cannot easily unwind. So a little bit of negativity with Fed Evans, with JP Morgan's uh, Jamie Dimon, and then a little bit of offsetting positive news out of Russia. We'll have to again wait and see if that is legit. If it is, and if there was some kind of peace deal brokered, which is a stretch, doesn't look likely, that would be a very positive thing for the markets. For stocks like AMC, they would react the best especially stocks that are over 20% short, where computers have really been shorting these stocks into the ground. If if you could get a sentiment flip, if you could get positive news, those computers, they're not like people. They're going to instantly start to cover on those short positions. The actual hedge fund managers themselves, if they don't use computers, like I said in previous videos, those are probably going to be the guys that hold on a little bit longer than they should to those short positions that really start to drive the stock much, much higher. So that is pretty uh, much it as far as what's actually going on today. Keep in mind, we do have those major data points, the biggest one being CPI, which does come out on Thursday at 8.30 in the morning. That's going to be the holy grail of catalyst for really the next month or two until the next CPI report comes out around November uh, 15th. Uh, and, and at that point, you're already passed your your Fed meeting. So typically, the inflation report, the CPI report that matters the most is the the last one before you get a Fed meeting, because if CPI goes up in a big way, well, the Fed's definitely going to, you know, raise rates to a large degree coming at the next Fed meeting. If it comes down in a big way, that's a much greater chance that they're going to do a smaller rate hike. And that's why the markets are going to pay very close attention to the CPI report on Wednesday. And if CPI does come down in a big way, the markets will start to price that in immediately that the Fed will do a smaller rate hike. If the markets price it in, that's what will happen. And that could be a very uh, satisfying, self-fulfilling prophecy. And you might get yourself some really good gains to the upside if that were to happen. Now, nonetheless, as far as AMC stock on the day, ladies and gentlemen, you are down about 2.34%, still above the lows for 2022, which was at $5.96 per share. You're pretty close at $6.38 per share. You still do have, you know, 5, 10% down to go before you would get to those lows. Uh, and the fact that you're not flushing the lows, that you're not heading into fresh lows as the markets are a lot lower now than they were back here uh back in may i think that's a very positive thing amc showing some uh, overall relative strength compared to the s p 500. now as far as 
the ortex data, the positive order value, is sitting at 29% for the day. Six orders totaling $141.23,000 is what we are seeing uh, as, as far as option activity for the day. So a lot of people are bearish. We know the net long exposure in the markets, meaning uh, you know, f hedge funds, they, they don't have a lot of upside exposure here, ex especially to technology. Well, that's expected. That's expected to drive down stocks and it should be expected to really rip these stocks in the event that we do get a positive uh, data point, positive catalyst, something along those lines. And AMC, I think, would perform very, very well, not only because the short interest is high, but there's a lot of people that bet behind and, and, and really hold the line for AMC stock. So I think you'd get a lot more of that FOMO heading into a stock like AMC rather than something like the S&P 500 index fund or, or something along those lines. That's why AMC always will pr pr pretty much always perform much better uh, than the markets on those 3% S&P 500 positive days. AMC stock up 10 to 20% is uh, usually how it works. Now, nonetheless, the dollar amount currently sold short in AMC is sitting at 645.48 million shares. So that is, uh, that's, that's, well, that's dollars actually, sorry. Uh, $645.48 million worth of uh, shorted shares on AMC stock. That's a little bit better. Apologies for that. Still a very, very large amount. And take these numbers with a grain of salt because it says the dollar amount is going down. And that's because the share price has been going down. But we know the short interest is probably a lot higher than what we're getting reported here today at 19.18%. The free flow out and loan at 36% alone doesn't really make sense that the short interest is only 19%. So I think that's uh, something that, that kind of proves the short interest is higher uh, right there. Now shares out on loan sitting at 185.43 million days to cover at 4.45 and cost to borrow at 18.44% and 100% share utilization. You are seeing a cost to borrow max. It's not coming up it's not available uh let's go back and see if it'll give us some numbers here uh it's not giving us anything but when you actually click on the chart itself you're getting a number of 29.22 percent for cost of our average 24.51 percent and cost of our minimum at 17 percent so i'm not quite sure why it says not available that's kind of interesting. Maybe you guys have some tinfoil on exactly uh, why that is. But nonetheless, the data here does look very good. But I do think in this market environment, don't be confused. You probably need to see a market wide U-turn to get AMC stock to go parabolic or you need to get some really good news uh, from Adam Aaron, from, from AMC itself. Uh, maybe the combination of the two. That would be the best case scenario. And in those circumstances and in, in those situations i think amc would perform uh very very well and you will get that short squeeze nonetheless like i said amc stock still above the lows of 2022 which is showing relative strength the rsi uh ex extremely oversold at 35.19 uh still some room to go to the downside to get to the most oversold level of 2022 which was back here in january uh and and that's when the stock just pretty much took a nosedive but you are at those oversold levels so uh really indicative of uh, a bounce at, at these levels that's what tends to happen usually if you buy a stock around the rsi as long as the business itself is not falling apart you can usually do pretty good at least in the short term with a bounce trade now the macd is pretty neutral but it is definitely crossed back over into bearish territory so a little bit of good and bad for the day i will say light at the end of the tunnel uh you've been dealing with the pain in the markets now for about a year and historically bear markets uh don't last too much longer than a year i think the average bear market is like 20 months uh so you're getting there guys and either way it goes i do think amc uh will go through a big move here shortly especially with all of the positive catalysts that are on the near-term horizon not even to mention we haven't even mentioned it in this video but midterms that tends to be a very historically bullish event as well it's 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 not in democrats um 
benefit to have the stock market down 30 percent heading into a midterm election it's simply not people are not going to want to you know vote democrat when they look at their portfolios or 401ks and it delayed their retirement by five ten years right so a lot of good things on the horizon but today definitely not a highlight of that we'll just call it that so that's pretty much going to be all for this video hit that like button subscribe to the channel source your comments questions or concerns down below in the comment section thank you guys for watching and i will see you in the next one